Hey everyone, in this video I'd like to share some improvements I've made to my Ultratech V5 faceting mast. I purchased my Ultratech machines two years ago. Before that, I worked with a Gravesmark 5XL for many years. I really love the Ultratech V5 mast. It is well designed and precisely built, with no play at all, and excellent repeatability allowing me to return to the exact same facet with ease. You may see that I'm using the V5 mast with a graves base. I prefer this setup because the graves base is much quieter. The Ultratech base produces a noticeably louder sound. When working for long hours, this difference is significant. I also like the mast's position being closer to me and I've gotten used to the posture it allows while faceting. I rest my right elbow on this box and my left elbow on the table, keeping my back straight and avoiding the need to lean forward when lifting the stone to inspect the facet. This would be my typical working posture. So, what improvements have I made to my Ultratech V5 mast? The most important one is this custom design and 3D printed piece, which allows me to change index positions with the same hand while holding the stone. I prefer to hold the stone with my fingers while cutting. It lets me apply more pressure against the lap and maintain better control of the stone. Controlling the stone with your fingers can be important for fine adjustment of the facets when we can force the inclination of the stone a little to one side or the other and also for polishing where we sometimes have to use quite a lot of pressure on it. Alternatively, I can use my left hand to help turn the index wheel, but even then, the process is much faster. Before I had this extra piece, when I was cutting with my fingers on the stone, changing indexes took me a bit longer. Let me show you how it worked before. I had to use my left hand to steady the quill, reposition my right hand, change the index and then pick up the stone again. To eliminate these extra movements, I designed this small plastic piece, which allows me to change the index while keeping my hands practically unchanged. The piece is easy to attach and remove, and it doesn't prevent me from using the handle when I need it. For example, to apply an extra pressure with my left hand. It also doesn't interfere with traditional index changing, which I still use at times. For example, when working at 90 degrees on the girdle. Let me show you how it works. Let's set the angle to 90 degrees. We'll change the direction of the disc's rotation to avoid splashing. And now, let's get started with the girdle.
Initially, the freshly printed piece was a bit tight, making it harder to attach and remove. I used a screwdriver to slightly open it, like this, but over time the plastic loosened and now I can put it on and take it off without any issue. At first, I considered adding a clamping system with a screw, but after six months of use, I've realized it's unnecessary. The piece stays in place securely and helps me to speed up the cutting. Whenever it's not attached, I quickly miss it and put it back on. If you're interested in trying out this index changing piece for your V5, I can print one for you. There will be a link in the video description. Another improvement I made helps me keep track of the cheater's position. I placed a reference mark on the back of the rocker and attached a piece of transparent ruler to monitor the cheater's position when it's far from its starting point. Since I frequently cut complex designs with fractional indexes and do a lot of recutting, I often rely on the cheater. With this additional ruler, even if the cheater wheel has rotated multiple times, I can mark the exact position of a facet and return to it if needed. For example, here I am at position 0 on my ruler scale. Here I have moved to position minus 1.5 and here I am in position plus 1.1. To further assist in tracking the cheater position, I've painted half of the cheater wheel with a red marker so I can easily tell whether I've rotated it forward or backward. Now, when recording the exact position of a facet, I use four numbers instead of two the usual angle and index, plus the ruler position and the cheetah reading, marking the white numbers with a plus sign and the red numbers with a minus sign. This way, I can return to the exact facet position quickly and efficiently. Here is an example of this type of notes from my workbook. To cut a diagram with fractional indexes, I have calculated the cheater position to be placed for each tenth of an index for different wheels. If the tenth is greater than 5, it is easier to reach it by subtracting from the next index number. Using these tables, very complex designs can be faceted quite quickly. One important thing to keep in mind. When changing the index wheel, after removing it, make sure the rocker doesn't drop and break the ruler on the other side. To prevent this, always lock the rocker in its raised position, as if you were rounding the stone. Once secured, you can change the index wheel as usual without any issues. To avoid the built-in locking mechanism from occasionally releasing, I like to secure the rocker in its raised position with a Velcro band. This ensures a safe index wheel change, while preventing the rocker from lowering and damaging the ruler. Here are a few additional minor modifications I've made. I added a horizontal position mark on the mast to quickly and visually set it to 90 degrees before fine adjustments. I engraved a small mark here on the quill border, allowing me to use a permanent marker to record the stone's position when removing and reinserting it. Since I don't use keyed dops, this helps with the initial alignment by eye, making it easier to precisely align the stone later by placing a girdle facet on the lap. While not a mast modification, I also use this convenient marker holder, which allows me to open 
and close the marker with one hand while holding the stone in position. Since I use the marker frequently during facetting, this small addition is quite helpful. Next thing, I mark the toothed detent segment for the index wheel, as it surprisingly came without any markings. I also mark my index wheels with symbols for cardinal points, diagonals, triangles and hexagons. This makes finding necessary indices much faster, often without even looking at the numbers. Finally, the screw that serves as the axle for this handle was constantly loosening, which was really annoying. You can't tighten it either, because then the wheel won't turn. I had to add some blue tack to the screw thread, and so far it hasn't loosened and stays in place. That's all for now. I hope you find this video helpful. Cheers and happy cutting.